What time is it? Too early for this camera in my nose. Well, I mean, that's how it's going to work. That's how it's going to go if we're going to be doing these regular haul videos. So. It is 7.58 in the morning. What? Actually, it's 7.59. You are incorrect. It just changed. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Guys. Uh, peeps are lining up. They're lining up over there, guys. It's a crowd. All right, what are we gonna find today? I don't know. Everything? All the things. All the things? Mm -hmm. You're gonna get three cartloads? No. No! Not with that attitude. I don't need three cartloads. All right, we're gonna do this, and it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna find some dead stock Levi's from the 40s. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. It's gonna happen. Okay. I'm manifesting that stuff right there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Yeah, you got anything good in there? What? You got anything good in there? Not really. Any snacks? I don't even have snacks. I no have water. Come on, Corey. <laughs> we need some we need snacks next time. Okay. All right. Bye. Right. Hand sanitizer. Ten forty three. One. Oh. <coughs> Take. Sorry. I can't breathe now. Jeez. 1043, it's 102 degrees. We stayed one rotation longer than we should have. However, they were like busting those rotations out like nobody's business. They're pretty fast. They were super fast. They were like four or five rotations. Today. Oh, at least five that we stayed for. Yeah. So it's hard because it's like you get done looking and you're kind of wanting to go, but they're already like starting to bring out the next one. It's hard to say no. But yeah, that was a mistake. Um, but overall, I mean, did you find anything really cool? Um, yeah, I mean, I found some good pieces. I mean, honestly, Nothing... Sorry, obviously we'll be sharing them, but... Yeah, I found some good pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So it was it was a good day? It was a good day. So? Yeah, not all mediocre today. I found something really cool. You don't even know what it is. Ooh. It's real cool, though. Um, any happenings inside? No. No we drama. Have to, we have to report on the happenings. I saw a little bit of drama. Um, one of the uh, shoe ladies... So there's the people who like, uh, they, they park a bazillion carts, they load them all up with shoes. Anyway, they're kind of ridiculous. There were, one of the teacher bros had his cart against the wall and she came over and was like yelling at him because apparently she wanted that spot. It was kind of ridiculous. He, he gave in very quickly. He wasn't going to like fight her over it, but it was dumb. Uh, less, less gnats inside, but then I discovered they're all in the bathroom. So that was gross. I don't use the bathroom at the bins. It, overall not bad, but now it's like full of gnats. Jeez. Anyway, do you want me to get you some coffee? Yes, please. What? You sure? Yeah. 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 Here's everything we got. This is all Vicky's right here. And of course, no, wait, what? No, this is Vicky's. These two are Vicky's. That one's mine right there. But stay tuned for the haul. Right now we got to do our shipping. I've got a few things to ship. Vicky's got about 11 billion. Hey everyone. So I'm just gonna show you what I picked up at the bins earlier today. We were there for like, they were pretty fast. So we were there for like four or five different rotations. Um, I didn't find anything like super spectacular, but I do have some good uh, pieces. Some a little bit better than bread and butter pieces. And I'll start with this. So this is actually a vintage faux fur uh, capelet. So by that, I mean, ugh, this is a bins thing, so I hate to put it on me, but mm, it would be worn over a dress or whatever. It's like 1950s, 60s. These sell really well. And as a matter of fact, I think this may sell better than real fur because a lot of people have issues with um, real fur, even if it's vintage. So I don't know, I paid like three, four bucks. I'll probably uh, list it for like 75. Keywords like pinup, um, glam, Hollywood, that kind of thing. So let's see, along the same vein, this is a uh, faux fur black jacket, uh, black, it's like made to look like sable uh, fur. And it's faux, it's made in the USA. Um, it tells you to clean using fur methods, which means I'm not gonna clean it. Uh, but it has the hook and eye closure in the front. This is probably like 70s, 80s. And again, I'll probably list it around the same price, around the $75 to $100 mark. They're heavy, but um, 
people like them. And a couple of question, things on the black one, I would definitely put the word festival in there. Um, people wear that fur type of stuff for festivals, uh, kind of like Burning Man and that kind of thing. So let's see. I got this fun vintage leopard print jacket with kind of like a cinched peplum waist and uh, these little beaded grommets all around the, um, the collar and stuff. So this is like vintage like 80s, maybe early 90s. Big shoulder pads, very fun and funky. I don't know what I'll list it for. It's not any specific great name or anything, but probably around that $65, $75 range. Uh, let's see. One of the things I picked up that I don't know if uh, it was even worth picking up, but I guess we'll see. Sometimes with the bins, things are so cheap, I take a risk. But these are flags from outside, I have two of them. Flags that hung outside of South Point Casino, uh, but they were for some type of racing thing, something cup, winner's cup, I don't know. So I'm gonna look it up in radio, radio cup. I don't know what that means, but sometimes those things are worth a lot. South Point hosts a lot of the PBR and NFR type of things. That's not what this is, but um, I will see if it has any value or any resale value. I'll let you know, I'll let you know. So there's two of those. They're very lightweight. They're like parachute material that hung outside the casino. Um, let's see. We got a basic bread and butter Tommy Bahama silk shirt. Don't always pick them up, but I do pick them up when they're at the bins and I'll probably get 30 to 40 for this. It's nothing fantastic, but it's clean. These are vintage 80s chic or chic, chic jeans. This is the label on the back. Um, vintage 80s with the tapered leg, high waist mom jeans in like the, you know, acid wash from the 80s. They're tiny. They're probably like a, a size, you know, small, but those always sell. Another bread and butter item that I tend to sell quite a bit of are these um, denim shirts. This is Abercrombie. Uh, it happens to be more of a Western one because it has the snap front. These are bread and butter, $30, $40. Doesn't really matter what the brand is. Some brands command more, but even the low end brands are, you're still gonna get 30 to 40. Okay. This is one Katie found and tossed over to me. This is also vintage 80s. This is just a denim maxi dress. It's in a nice soft chambray denim. It's a shirt dress. It's long. Uh, I would put the words modest in the title on this. It has a belt and then it also has these little polka dot print. Um, super easy to sell. These are kind of like a classic style that you can wear now. Uh, it doesn't mean that you look like you're wearing anything vintage. So I think I put this one around $75. It does have to be cleaned. It's a little dingy. Uh, this I picked up because it weighs like three ounces and it's that brand I've talked about before, Mod Cloth, which is a current brand company, but they're a retro clothing brand. They do not have in-person stores. Everything is sold online. This is just a basic white blouse. Even if it's 25 bucks, it probably cost me 50 cents. Um, this is a vintage 70s type of button front cardigan sweater. Look at this tag on here, it's super groovy. Look at that, look at that. Don't mind my gross fingernails. And it's just a striped button up kind of polyester vest. It's black and it has red and gold and blue like stripes on it. Pretty basic, probably forty dollars. Let's see, what else do I have? In this? Nothing else in that bag. This was something I picked up. They charged me six ninety nine for it because it's kind of big and heavy, but it is just a vintage um, picnic set. So it seems like it may even be unused. Uh, this particular brand does sell pretty well. I did check it out. I'd probably sell it for like fifty bucks. 
There's a little schmutz on the outside of the bag. I'll probably just uh, you know wipe that down with a damp cloth, maybe some Dawn dish detergent or something, and it'll be fine. A little heavy though. It's like six, seven pounds, so I, pr I will charge shipping on that. Let's see. <clears throat> you know I love me some linens. So I did pick up this um, Jack Skellington, Nightmare Before Christmas. I did a couple, got, got a couple of them. This is one, and then this is the other side. There's no tags on it. I don't necessarily think it's from the early vintage Nightmare Before Christmas stuff, but it's nice and soft. It's clean, there's no spots on it. I'll throw it in the washing machine. I should get at least $40 for it. This one, on the other hand, is one of the older ones. This has a Disney tag on it. This is a lightweight one. Somebody must have gotten rid of all their Jack Skellington stuff. It was in the same bin. And then there was one other one that I left behind because it was kind of gross. Uh, so it might be the same. This is kind of like a, a lighter weight one, probably another $40 or so. This blanket was on the last rotation that we stayed for and I was over it. I was not feeling like staying. However, this is a vintage made in Mexico San Marcos blanket and unlike the browns and blacks and beige colors that you usually have with all the deer and the eagles and the lions, which are the standard Viterlac and um, San Marcos blankets, this is kind of like a stained glass window one and I have sold one similar to this for about $200. It is clean. Uh, there's no holes or tears or anything, but it's super pilly. I am not going to be spending my time sweater shaving it. Although if I did, I'm sure I could ask for more money. Uh, but I'm happy to, you know, turn that into like $150 or so. This is what the tag looks like, just so you know. Let me see if I can just focus there. So it's San Marcos. Those are the older tags. And those desirable ones. Um, I have a vintage 80s men's ski jacket, a little ski parka. It looks very back to the future. Um, very similar to the type of thing that Michael J. Fox wore. It is not that particular one. The colorway is different, but this is vintage 80s White Stag. White Stag is, used to be a great ski wear company. They started selling everything under that label and sold out to Walmart sometime in the early 90s and the quality is, is just crap. Most white stag is not worth reselling, but the early white stag ski stuff with this type of tag is. So it's on the small side, but I'll probably get about 75 bucks for it. Let's see. <clears throat> this is just a vintage, long 90s um, FUBU which again, it's a brand I don't normally pick up, but this is a long 90s patchwork kind of jacket. Pooh was more for men than women back in the 90s, but this is actually a women's jacket. So the style is gonna sell this far more than the name brand. It just has all these patches on it. It's like this long jacket, it's pretty cool. So, and I did just notice there's a hole in it, but I don't think that's gonna affect it too, too much on the bottom. Um, Maybe like 65, 75 bucks, unless there's a lot of them, which I have never seen it. That doesn't mean that there's not a lot. If there's a lot, then you know I'll price it a little cheaper to let it fly. I don't recommend doing that on other things, but sometimes if it is a regular name brand thing and you're gonna have many of them, then why would you price it the highest? I have just a couple more things to show you. I really didn't get that much today. This is just a vintage, um, Wrinkles dog, I, I think some of you guys might remember these. They're from the 80s. They were out around the same time as pound puppies. I think they were meant to compete with the pound puppies. These had clothes on them and stuff. They've got a little puppet hole in the back. Super cute, still has the clothes and the little tag around the collar and even the little underwear underneath. Um, so some people price these really low. I'll price it around the $40 range and it, it'll probably sell on like Macari or Etsy before it sells on eBay. Did get some basic shoes that sell well. This brand, Corky's. Um, these actually look almost unworn, just basic leather sandals. These will probably sell for $40. 
Another pair of similar, like fisherman sandals almost. These are Joseph Siebel, Sabel Siebel. Those are pretty uh, popular and higher end walking shoes, comfort shoes. They do sell pretty well and pretty consistently. Again, if I price them around $40, they'll probably sell quickly. <clears throat> and I have two more things that I think might be my best things. I just haven't had time to look anything up. I'm literally pulling stuff out of the bag. Um, we just got back in, I shipped my stuff, and now we're doing this. So these were kind of like a rescue for me, but these shoes are vintage Christian Dior, gladiator sandals or, or gladiator type uh, high heels. You can see the tag right there. Let's see if I can, it's like a vintage 80s Dior. I can't even show you the tag, sorry. That kind of, it's at a weird angle. Hope you can see that. So these are leather, they're patent leather, and the inside is pretty destroyed. The leather uh, lining is starting to peel on the inside, but the exterior leather is not in bad shape and the zippers work all the way up. So I'm gonna do my best to clean these up a little bit and then I may sell them in one of my vintage groups that I'm in just to see if, you know, I think somebody really needs to rescue these. These would look really great on someone. And they are vintage Christian Dior, so I couldn't just leave them in the bins, right? If these were in better shape, these are like five, $600 shoes. Maybe I'll get a hundred for them in this shape. I don't know. And the other thing that I got could be worthless, could be worth money. I don't know. I haven't looked it up yet, but it's a uh, vintage Minolta camera. It has the Minolta lens on it as well. Some of them are worth nothing and some of them have good value. This is a Minolta 7000 Maxim with autofocus. Uh, it does have a digital out uh, reading screen on it, so it's a film camera. I'll see if it has value. If it doesn't, I'll just donate it to someone. Again, some of the film cameras are worth selling, especially Minolta, which you know is a very high-end camera brand, and then sometimes they're not worth anything, so it's hard to tell. Anyway, that's it. That's what I got for the day, and uh, see you on Sunday. Bye. Hey, it's my turn. Uh, so I didn't get as much stuff as Vicky did, but I did find some super cool pieces, some mediocre pieces, some filler pieces, pretty much what you can expect every time you go to the bins. Although the super cool pieces, you can't always expect that. You never know. So let's go ahead and look at what I got. Uh, let's see, first thing I have here is, yeah, I gave Vicky some cool pieces and she gave me some good stuff too. Um, this is one that she grabbed for me. It's a sweatshirt, I'd say this is probably 90s, and it's the UBC Museum of Anthropology in Vancouver, Canada, but it's uh, what's really cool is it's this Northwest Coast Art, um, West Coast Art style. It's like um, First Nations, a lot of times it's Haida. I'll have to look up this artist, it's Lyle Wilson. I'm sure there's some information about him, but I love this kind of stuff and Vicky knows that, so she went ahead and gave it to me. So I was excited because it's one of my favorite pieces from today. Um, and she gave it to me. So, but this I'll probably sell, I'll probably list it for like 70. Um, sometimes it takes a little while to sell, but I always do pretty well with these, uh, this style of um, clothing, with that artwork. Next up, I have this 90s, it's on an Am Anvil tag. It's just a sleep shirt. Um, you can see right here, Anvil, come on, come on now. Uh, made in the US, one size fits all. You can tell by like the collar and the length that it is a sleep shirt. This is Las Vegas, Nevada. It's got the cool sun design on it. Um, this isn't gonna sell for anything crazy. Maybe, maybe $35, $40, but always a good deal when you get at the bins for a buck. Got this satin bomber jacket. This is vintage um, 80s, 90s jacket factory. I grabbed this because it's pretty much dead stock. It does, it is Sprint, so I don't really know, like, they'll be able to sell this for a whole lot, but I have a hard time passing up a really cool vintage satin bomber jacket, even if it's something lame, like Sprint Central Telephone Nevada. But um, hey, if I can sell it for 40 bucks, that'll be cool. Little kitty cat vintage t-shirt. This is from, this is like probably Y2K. Um, actually, yeah, 2003, so. Y2K, it's got some staining, I'll have to wash it, bleach it, whatnot. Of course, I had to grab this vintage sweatshirt because it says 
Cannon Beach, Oregon, which I believe, I believe I've taken Vicki to Cannon Beach. I can't remember for sure. Have you been to Cannon Beach? I don't know. <laughs> Cannon Beach is where, uh, is near where um, the haystack uh, rocks are that you see in the Goonies, um, which was filmed in Astoria, but Cannon Beach is that area. Anyway, um, this is like an 80s. It needs to be uh, sweater shaved. And you know, I probably won't make a ton on this or anything like that, but maybe 40 bucks. Here's another one that Vicki grabbed for me. This is a zip up hoodie. Um, I really like this TNC Surf Designs, uh, this brand. It's been around since, well, this is 1971. So if you can find a vintage one, they can go for a lot. Um, this is not, I don't believe this is vintage. It could be actually, because it has this paper tag on it. Um, here's, the, here's the main tag. You can see the main tag right there and it's got a paper tag underneath so actually i would say this is probably at the very least y2k and it's nice zip up hoodie and it's got the big graphic on the back and this is from pearl city hawaii so i'll probably list that for like 70. i'll see if i can find any comps on it <clears throat> another one that vicky grabbed for me um i mean this will probably list for maybe like 30 bucks but i just like the graphic it says stop loan sharks it's got a shark on it, and NACA shark beware. Um, I'll probably just list this for like 30. It's got a cool graphic on it though. Maybe sell it for like 25, I don't know. Let's see, I got a bunch of t-shirts. Uh, when I first got there, I went into this one bin and um, there were a lot of t-shirts that were turned inside out. It was a whole bunch of different white t-shirts. They were turned inside out. They were definitely used. But I could see from the tags that they were probably at the very least like early 2000s, like Y2K. So instead of like going and looking at them, I was just like grabbing them as fast as I could. And I probably got like 15 of them or so. And I put them into my cart right away. And then later when I had some time, I went and like took them all back, um, you know, turned them right side out to see what was on them. And like half of them were, were worthless. They either didn't have anything on them at all, or they had something really random, or they had holes in them and they were, weren't worth saving. Um, but I did find some serious gems. This is not one of them real quick. This is uh, this Big Head Designs. It's a really cool graphic. This does have some stain. This is from St. Thomas, US Virgin Islands. Uh, but it's on that Comfort Colors tag. This is probably like Y2K. Um, but I love the, the graphic, the Big Head fish graphic, piranha graphic there. But let's see what some of these shirts were. Let me see if I can find the ones there were some of the inside out ones. Yeah, these are all them. And another one. It's like a really interesting assortment of t-shirts here. So first of all, I have these. Uh, these are from probably Y2K. They're on this Hanes heavyweight tag. So I told you guys before, you'll see, you'll see some of these like in the late 90s. I'm pretty sure this is Y2K. And these say Celebrity Weekend, Backfield Motion, NFL Football Camp. So I'm gonna have to do some research on this, but um, I'm assuming, I mean, obviously it's NFL Football Camp, but I think it was like celebrities that got to go to football camp with NFL players is what I'm, I'm taking that to mean, but I'll look into that. But I actually got like two or three of these, which was really weird. Um, so I don't know how much these are worth. I don't know. I'll see what I'll see exactly what it's all about, but I would think anywhere from 40 to 70, we'll say. So I have like, yeah, like three of these t-shirts. So obviously this was all like one person's uh, donation. It's just weird because it's like, I don't know why they were all turned inside out. Kind of strange. Um, next up, here's another one that I don't really know what this was all about. Um, this is from 2005. Maybe somebody out there is a Family Guy fan. And these are on this jerseys tag. So again, this is 2005, so not technically vintage. Um, but for people who buy shirts, who collect shirts, uh, 2005 is close enough. I'll still write vintage in the title, um, but I will say 2005. So I'm not trying to like deceive them. They'll know exactly what year it's from. But this says, um, this one has, it says we're back wait till they hear my salary demands so that's one so these look like i mean i don't know if they're like did family guy go away and then come back again or was there like a writer's strike or something like that i'm not entirely sure but it says we're back wait till they hear my salary demands and it does have the 2005 
TCFFC is right there. This is somewhat worn and faded, but uh, yeah, so it's Stewie. And then we've got this other one, and this one has uh, Brian the dog on it. It says, we're back, your stupid letter writing campaign actually worked. So again, I don't know exactly what this is, for, what this is referring to, but um, I'm thinking maybe like, oh, oh, I don't know, some sort of writer strike or something like that. I can't remember, I have to look at and see what happened in 2005. But these could be like somewhat limited how many of these are out there. And also I'm thinking because of the whole celebrity weekend, NFL football day, I don't know if maybe this is from somebody who actually worked on the family guy and maybe that's why he had these t-shirts. I don't know. So it's a curious thing, the things you find at the bins. This is from, just have a date, there's only something on the front. Um, this is on this Fruit of a Loom tag. It says, made in El Salvador of USA fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess this is probably um, Y2K, early 2000s. And it just has this front graphic, it says a buck stops here and it's the pink pony. I didn't show this to Vicky, I'll just show her because she'll like the pink pony, but it's like kind of like a, Come on now, you guys. This this camera is really giving me some serious troubles here when it comes to focusing on things. But anyway, the pink pony. You can see the the girl with her little pink bikini on. She's she's on a pink pony. I don't know what that is. I'm assuming it's some sort of place, like maybe a bar or something like that. But it's cool. And then let's see, I got two more I think from that batch of turned inside out T-shirts. This one's super worn. Um, it is on this Fruit of a Loom tag assembled in El Salvador of USA components. I actually do think this one is late 90s, um, but again, it could be early Y2K. This is very faded. You can see on the front, it's got Gatorade logo on it, but then on the back, it's got the really big Gatorade logo. And it says, is it in you? Um, now there was another Gatorade one, <clears throat> but it didn't have the back hit. It only had this faded front hit and it had a big hole in it, so I threw that back. <coughs> My apologies. Okay, the best thing I found of the turned inside out stuff, you guys. This is super cool. First of all, it's on the tag. <clears throat> Hold on a second, I need to cough, drink some water. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. So this t-shirt, it's on this Converse tag, which is super cool. Um, and then it's got this white tag underneath. It does say made in Dominican Republic, uh, but it is single stitch and it's definitely from 1991. I'll show you the back first. It says Converse, it's what's inside that counts. Uh, this has some staining on it. I don't know that I will try to wash it though and I will show you why when I show you the front. You can see right here, it says three times a champion, always a lady. National Champs 1987, 1989, 1991. Now this is the Tennessee Volunteers. Uh, this is from the women's basketball team. But the best part about this t-shirt is it's actually signed by Pat Summit. Um, for anyone that may not know, Pat Summit was the basketball coach of the uh, Tennessee Volunteers, the women's basketball team. And uh, she was the coach for like a crazy long time, like over 30 years, I think. And uh, in fact, she started coaching for them in like 1974, um, but she was still playing basketball. She was on the, the Olympic team, the US team, uh, when they got silver in 1976. Um, but she was the coach until all the way until like 2012, uh, when she died in 2016, I believe. Now, again, I did some research, so I don't know all this stuff off the top of my head, you guys. But um, <clears throat> when she died, she still had the record at that time for like the most wins of any uh, college basketball coach. And I think that was men and women. She had like over a thousand wins um, in like the 38 years that she coached the Tennessee Volunteers, the, the women's team. Uh, they never had a losing season, which is crazy. Um, she got the Presidential uh, Freedom Award, her Freedom Medal. Um, she was in the Hall of Basketball Hall of Fame. Like she's just kind of a big deal when it comes to uh, college basketball um, coaching, but she was the head coach for like 38 years, something like that. So she signed this, uh, I did some research. Her signature definitely brings in some money, like a basketball signed by her. There's many that have been sold for like 150, 200 bucks. Um, there's cards that sell for hundreds of dollars um, that she's signed. So I would say, I mean, like I said, it's got 
a little spot right here, a couple little spots right here. It does have a little uh, tear in the, or separation in the stitching right here. But honestly, I don't think that matters. Anyone that buys this is not buying this to wear it um, with her signature right there. But it's just a super, super cool piece of history. And I would say, you know, I'm probably gonna list this for like 300 um, and hope to get at least 200. But I mean, come on, how awesome is this? How cool is this? I was so excited to pull this out of the bins today. Very, very cool piece of history. Um, on a sad note, she retired, you guys, because she got diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's like uh, when she was only like 59, which is super lame after such an amazing career. And she only lived probably like four years after that. So it definitely happened rapidly, um, which I guess that could be good and bad. But uh, okay, next up, this t-shirt, I think I need to do some more research. I'm pretty sure this is the, the skateboarding brand, Independent. Um, I've seen their t-shirts before. Uh, I don't know if this is their logo or not, so I'm gonna have to research that, but it, you know, it's easy to take the risks when you're only paying a buck. But uh, it's got, just got the tag independent. I don't see anything underneath that. It's not single stitch or anything, so I would maybe say this is like Y2K, not entirely sure, but I need to research and see if that this logo, it's not the logo I've seen before, so I just need to research it, but it could be a super cool find. All right, uh, let's see, do I have anything else to show? Well, I did find a pair of 501s, which I'm always happy to find. These are like, let's see, where were they made? I've been consistently selling these. Yeah, these are 90s. I've been consistently selling these on Etsy for 60 to $63. Um, so just, you know, it's a classic pair of jeans. So as long as I can keep finding them, I'm gonna keep buying them and I'm gonna keep selling them. Um, Last thing I'll show you from today's haul, there's probably like five or six things I'm not showing you just because they're not all that interesting. Uh, this is actually something Vicki had picked up and she decided to throw it back. She felt like uh, she wasn't super feeling super confident about dealing with the staining on it because she had picked up something recently um, and had the same issue, but I decided I'd take the risk and see if I could do something about it. Um, this is it looks like somebody did the embroidery after like this doesn't look like Wrangler did this because it's a Wrangler tag but it's covered by the embroidery which is kind of interesting because I don't think they would have done it like that but I don't know um, but it's got really really cool this is a, a pearl snap western shirt it's got just really cool details of this guitar and music um, you can see the back here goes across the the shoulders um, it's got that kind of, uh, I think they call it shark tooth pocket where it's the double points. Um, the problem is it does have, you can see a yellow stain right here and it does have some yellow staining on the back as well. Um, I figured again, if I'm paying a buck, I might as well get it and see if I can get those stains out because it is such a cool vintage Western shirt. Um, so I'm gonna try it and we'll see what happens. I'll report back. Um, so I think that's it. Now I did want to show you as a little bonus, I wanted to show you, uh, you know, last week we did our haul and then we did some of our haul on our Sunday show, um, but there was one day Saturday when we had gone to the bins and we didn't show any of that stuff. We only showed the stuff from the previous uh, two days at the bins. So I did have a handful of stuff that I figured I would show you guys just because uh, when else are you guys gonna see it? Um, this is one, this is from 1990. And this is a San Jose Center for the Performing Arts, but it's got Peter Pan on it and it's got, uh, it's got little Tinkerbell. How cute is that? So, you know, it's not like an official Peter Pan Disney item. Um, so it's probably not gonna fetch like a ton of money, but you don't see a whole lot of like vintage Peter Pan t-shirts. So I'm hoping that like, you know, I'll still be able to sell it, probably list it for like 70, sell it for anywhere from 50 to 70. Um, I decided to go ahead and, and try my chances at, at selling towels, who knows? This is a vintage, Club Med towel. I don't know how they sell, so I could, you know, this could be my first try and I immediately fail at it, but it's a nice big, got a nice big graphic on it. Club Med, lady sitting under an umbrella on the beach. So we'll see. It probably weighs like, uh, I probably paid like two to three dollars for it. So we'll see how I do in my first towel acquisition. Uh, next up, you guys know I've been picking up tote bags occasionally and doing pretty well with them. I've sold uh, two of the canvas tote bags that 
Basically, I've only bought two canvas tote bags and I've sold both of them. I have another tote that's not really a canvas one and that one has not sold. So maybe I need to stick to the canvas uh, tote bags. But this is a Trader Joe's one. And I love the graphic on this. It's kind of worn and faded, but it's got like all the, it's all over print uh, vegetables and stuff. And when I looked up comps for this, um, I should be able to sell this for like 30 bucks. And that seems to be kind of the going amount for selling tote bags. Um, it's a really nice cloth canvasy tote and uh, these are super easy to take pictures of obviously the measurements are super easy so it's made in the u.s and it's just really really super cute i love the little vegetables and fruits all over it very very cute so hopefully i can pay, I get 30 bucks for that next up this one needs to be washed it's definitely got some discoloration and staining on it um it's, you know, the brand isn't that exciting. It's this Lee brand, Lee Sport. Um, but this is actually a Star Wars shirt. You can see the Star Wars embroidered on the sleeve. And this is, a, this is Darth Maul. Look at that. So if I can get it a little cleaner, hopefully, um, looking at comps, this is from, I think, the second movie. So it is vintage. And uh, from the comps, I should be able to get 60, 70 bucks for this. So. Kind of a cool little little find. All right, two more things. This is was a really heavy buy. Nice heavy, heavy jacket parka. Um, but this is a you know cat, a caterpillar jacket. And it's this heavy, um, I think it's got reflective spots on it. Um, big parka jacket. Uh, but from the cops, I believe I should be able to sell this for a hundred bucks. So I paid up for it. You know, it's probably a good five pounds, uh, four to five pounds. So, I mean, not quite four, uh, five pounds, but maybe four pounds. So I probably paid like, I don't know, 750, somewhere around there for it. Uh, it's a little dirty, I need to wash it. But if I can take 750 and turn it into 100 bucks, that's a pretty good flip. And then the last thing, this is a jacket that Vicki actually gave to me, because um, she knows I like this brand. Uh, this is a Golden Bear jacket. You can see the tag there. Um, this looks like it's probably like maybe 80s um, and this style this is actually a down jacket um, this style is kind of similar to a derby of san francisco jacket somewhat like as far as like the um the ribbed collar and cuffs and hem uh, but this has down filling to it a golden bear they do a lot of like letterman's jackets and leather jackets but this has a really cool flannel lining to it um, some golden bear stuff can be all over the place so the leather and letterman jackets can go for quite a bit of money um, I haven't been able to find this one exactly, but I'll still try and get 100 bucks out of it. We'll see if I do. But um, I just really like the Golden Bear brand, personally. Anyway, that is everything. That was your little bonus haul. And I think I showed you everything I wanted to show you. That's what we get for one day at the bins. We were there for about two hours, and there were a lot of rotations, which was great. Um, I don't know if that's just a Friday thing or what because it's really hit or miss the days when the the rotations take forever it's not as great it's nice when they're constantly coming out um even if you're not finding like crazy stuff every time it's like at least you're keeping busy because it can really drag you down when you're standing around waiting for more to come out but anyway that's it for today i hope you guys are enjoying this i'm gonna try and get this up today um see if we can keep up with it, you know doing at least two haul videos a week you guys seem to really like them uh, give us any feedback about the stuff that we showed you. Sometimes you guys have more information than we do. Or in my case, I say the wrong baseball team and I get in a lot of trouble in the comments. But whatever. Thanks, guys. Anyway, and we will see you on Sunday. Bye.